Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Someone on my server suggested that I build a turboprop style fighter aircraft and that made me ask a question to myself. Before I forget to mention it though, I do have a server. If anyone is interested in suggesting builds, being notified about my new videos and productions, or just wants to hang out in general, my server is in the description below. Feel free to join. But that's enough shameless self-promotion for one video. Let's get into the actual idea I had. So, back on topic, basically in the server it had led to a brief historical discussion of turboprops. Historically, they were experimented on somewhat due to how much quicker they accelerated than a turbine aircraft. Of course, this never ended up winning the hearts of the designers due to the jet engines simply improving to the point of making turboprops entirely obsolete for fighter aircraft. But the question is, what if turboprops were invented and experimented with first? What if, instead of post-war, these turboprops were developed and tested during World War II, or earlier? So in order to think about that, we need to think about the first turboprop aircraft to exist. The Gloucester Meteor, the first jet fighter from the Allies, also served as a testbed for the first turboprop aircraft ever developed. Obviously it was World War II, and the jet engines used were notably inefficient and pretty slow to accelerate. In order to change this, we sort of asked why not just attach an airscrew to the front of a turbine engine. First, this developed the turboprop, which had pretty promising results. Fast, quick acceleration, and far more fuel efficient. The turboprop seemed to combine the best qualities of both jets and propeller aircraft. But what if the turbofan was never invented and the jet engine never quite improved from its state in World War II? What if, instead of developing a high-speed, afterburning turbofan engine, we stuck with turboprops for a while longer due to all their positive qualities in early testing? Now in this hypothetical universe, I'm not saying jet fighters didn't ever exist or never improved. Just maybe instead of progressing to turbofans and afterburners so quickly, maybe the turboprops or prop fans were instead developed while technology such as radars, missiles, etc. continued to develop as normal. It seemed like a super fun concept for an aircraft, or maybe even for a project overall. It could lead to some very fun workarounds that I'm very excited to experiment with in the future. This could include things such as rocket planes for supersonics instead of afterburners, and maybe most fighters are using turboprops just like this one. So guys, if you like this idea, remember to tell me in the comments. Maybe this alt history series will become more developed. Maybe I can even add things such as countries or factions and multiple builds to fit into it. When rocket planes come to the game, I am absolutely doing another video on this for example. I would absolutely love to do more builds to go along with this in the future. History, lore, companies, politics, it's all up for grabs if I decide to make this a full-blown series. But for now, while I might not be making fictional countries, politics, or anything like that, I do want a fictional aerospace developer for all of our outlandish builds. For those of you who don't know, my name, my channel, is based around my favorite galaxy, Messier 82. Because of this, my fictional aerospace company shall go by the name of Galaxy Aerospace. But way before I get too carried away with talking about my channel and the history of science and turboprops and all that junk, let me just start talking about my build. Let's not make the same mistake as last time. I swear some of my previous videos I just talk about nonsense for like 5 minutes and I only have like 3 seconds to explain my build because the time lapse is too fast. Which, yeah, I know that's kind of my fault and I'm kind of making it worse right now. But that's fine, we'll, we'll, we'll just get on with it now. So anyways, my goal for this build was essentially to include all the technologies you may see on, let's say, uh, late 50s or early 60s fighter aircraft, for example. Crude IR seeking missiles, basic radars, high ordnance capability, you get the drill. Imagine technology levels of maybe like the first models of MiG-21 or maybe even an F-4H. Maybe even earlier than that, maybe closer to like an F-104's level of technology. But, either way, the styling of this aircraft would obviously be completely different, as it would most likely be transonic at best, but we would allow ourselves the technology of the time period, ignoring, of course, the turbines, to build our aircraft. Since, obviously, turboprops are what's experimented with and what's expected in these aircraft, I would be building a two-seater, transonic prop fan design. It would feature tapered wings with a light sweep on the front, and would be proposed as a fighter-attacker-style aircraft. The pilot would operate the aircraft in some of the air-to-air -air systems, whereas the backseat member would function partially as a Rio, and maybe even a Wizzo on some later models of aircraft if things such as air-to-ground ordinances that are guided are included. 
Due to the high-speed prop fan design, as well as the inclusion of a radar, the propellers would be in the back of this aircraft. This was the only way I could really think at the time to fit the radar as well as get the power I needed to the propellers. Maybe I could have done a uh, large nose cone and included some small radar components in the front. I mean, I know there were some military aircraft concepts that did exactly that, but I honestly thought the backwards propeller was a really cool idea. Maybe some other build in the future on the same alt history timeline will feature a radar similar to the one I just described. But anyways, this back propeller was a little bit problematic. The aircraft we were building was not large enough for full ejection seats, so if the pilot attempted to leave the aircraft, they had a chance of just going back into the propellers, which was obviously quite bad. So I in fact had two things to remedy this. I decided the best choice of action was an escape lever, in which when it was pulled, it would blow off the propellers and the hatch to the canopy. The hatch to the canopy would be in the bottom of the aircraft and the pilots would drop out, similar to the first uh, ejection style concepts on the F-104. It wasn't fully modeled, of course, since ejection and aircraft escape wasn't in flyout, but that was at least the idea. You'll see later as I try to model the jump seats that they don't quite fit, so I settle for a shorter, almost mini jump seat with a roll bar over the top to protect the pilots. Oh, and you know what? Speaking of which, here I go making that seat I was talking about earlier. It's pretty nice, it has cushioning and it has the roll bar, and I quite like it. But you know, while I'm building this, why don't I talk about what I was doing earlier on the aircraft, since I basically missed my entire opportunity to because I was too busy talking again. Because of course I was. Essentially, from this point on the aircraft, we had the radar in the front, we had the twin counter-rotating prop fan in the back, we had the turbines in the middle, which I guess in many ways made it function more like a traditional turboprop aircraft with the aesthetics of a prop fan, and then of course we had a total of 16 blades on a low diameter counterclockwise and clockwise spinning prop fan, or turboprop, whatever you want to call it, that would allow us to go to pretty high speeds. My goal for this aircraft was at least 500 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for a propeller aircraft, but we ended up actually being even faster. So you know, that's pretty good. We also wanted to include rockets, bombs, and missiles on this aircraft just to simulate all the ordnance it could be holding and its carrying capacity. Think about like the F4 for example, it can bomb, it can do air to air, it can do whatever it wants essentially. We also of course included an advanced sensing suite, it has not only IRST but it also has a radar in the front, so it has just about every sensor you could need from the time period, even more advanced than the time period. And then despite the aesthetics of it, you may be interested to find that that tail I made was actually a fully moving all-flying tail. It was vaguely modeled after an F-104's tail, but instead of being a T-tail, it was in between two uh, vertical stabilizers on each respective boom. Of course, I also included those little intakes in the front, as well as exhaust ducting that blows out just before the prop fan. I was thinking about redesigning the exhaust, but I decided against it for the time being. Anyways, here you can see now that both the Jimmies got the seats they wanted, and I am currently building the interior. The interior of this aircraft was quite simple, but ended up taking me a lot of time. Most of the gauges are analog, though we do have some somewhat digital looking things such as the radio. I don't know, I'm probably going to change that later on, but for now it's fine. Also instead of using the in-game HUD system that I could have used, I decided to use, well nothing actually, I decided to make my own reflexive HUD to represent something more similar to what you'd see on, let's say an F-104 or an aircraft of the 50s. Instead of having your full attitude and all of your telemetry data, you just would have a simple yellow gun sight and nothing else. The guy in the front seat got a small radar screen, and the guy in the back seat got a big radar screen, as well as some buttons and knobs to play around with, hypothetically simulating what a Rio might do in the back seat. From this point on, it's pretty simple. You see me add some mirrors and some other basic interior options for the pilot. And then I go to the back and complete the radar screen and whatnot for the Rio. You don't see it on camera because I actually need to finish this time lapse in a reasonable time without putting it at 20 times speed. But essentially I do some more work to the outside of the aircraft a little bit later down the road. Essentially it's nothing, it's a, it's a basic uh, paint scheme. It's the inclusion of a pitot tube and some other electric equipment. And then it's just smaller, more detailed designing and adding the bombs and adding things like doors for the landing gear bay and just little things like that. But otherwise, with all that out of the way, we were ready to fly and complete our mission objectives.
Well guys, we finally had it. This was our aircraft. It was actually pretty incredible. It could hold a sustained turn rate of about 20 degrees per second at low speed. Of course, it's expected that it's going to be a little bit better than, let's say, a fighter jet because, you know, it's using low speed optimized propellers and straighter wings. So, of course, it's going to be a little bit better than a fighter jet. But even then, I still wasn't expecting over 20 degrees per second sustained turn rate. That's just incredible. Guess that just goes to show how much power this thing really has. I mean, speaking of power, this thing could also get up to Mach 0.75 pretty easily at fairly low altitudes. I did this at just about 10,000 feet, so I could imagine if you went higher you could probably get well above Mach 0.8 with this thing. So I guess what I was saying is I was very, very, very pleased with the results of this aircraft. It could also carry some pretty heavy armaments and loadouts, and that's what led us to our tests. The purpose of this part of the video, the aircraft was going to be completing a few tests I had set up. The tests were pretty simple, they were just essentially mock interception and ground attack drills. So it started with needing to intercept a target drone I had spawned, and then after that going to destroy a tank I had spawned, just to make sure that I could do both air attack and ground attack at least somewhat effectively. Here you see us lining up for a missile shot just using a basic IR seeking missile. Considering the time period this aircraft was trying to mimic, it wouldn't surprise me if these missiles would count as perhaps rear aspect or early all aspect missiles. Either way, the missile's out and it has made contact with our target, and that concludes our air to air test. Of course, it does have guns in the event of needing to dogfight, but I just wanted to shoot down the drone as quickly as possible to get on to the next phase. The game spawned about 30 semi kilometers away, so it would require a little bit of cruising, but we were going in to destroy the tank. This is the part where we got to experience our cruise speed, as well as drop the bombs and rockets. I mean, I was really impressed with this thing's cruise speed. On this test, we reached about Mach 0.75, and that's with all of our rockets and bombs, which were weighing us down and increasing our drag by a lot. You saw me throw it into autopilot, and from here I kinda just let the plane do its thing all the way to the target. Obviously we cut autopilot and cut throttle right around here and start lining up for our attack on the tank. And down I go here. I decide on this attack run the first thing I'm gonna do is whip out the rocket pods and then bomb if it doesn't kill with the rockets. Getting ready, by selecting our rockets our speed is still slowly dropping but we're going quite fast, we maintained our speed a lot more than I thought. Here you can see the rockets do end up killing him here, but I drop the bombs anyways, just for the sake of dropping the bombs. I mean, why not? They're there, right? And they're very heavy. Also, that bomb dropping just looks really cool, and I am actually quite proud of the way it turned out. And after that, we have our flight home. Obviously, this part's going to be pretty quick and kind of boring, so I ended up speeding up to four times instead of three times, just so it's over with rather quickly for you guys. When trying to put on the autopilot here, I end up actually messing up pretty bad. Our aircraft oscillates a bunch, we pull some negative Gs, and we actually drop all of our ordnance because I accidentally hit the emergency jettison button while trying to set up the autopilot. Because of course, it can't be one of these videos with a mission in it without at least something going wrong, at least that's how it seems. Hey, at least this time I don't have any cats fighting over my popcorn. Either way, all things considered, this thing didn't actually burn through that much fuel and it went very, very, very quick on the way back, which, again, I was pretty happy with. It was nice to see that this whole idea for alt history actually seemed to work out pretty well and have at least fairly powerful, high-performing aircraft in it. Anyways, here I am, I'm just slotting it for final approach, have the trim open, the landing gear open, all that junk. Lucky enough for you guys and for the pilot in Rio, I don't absolutely slam it down on the ground this time. It isn't perfect, I mean, I'm still using an Xbox controller at the end of the day, landings aren't exactly smooth as butter no matter what I do. But you know what, that's enough making excuses, you get the idea. I touch down the aircraft, we make it back, everybody's happy, yay! Alright, well, I, I, I guess that means we can end the video here. So for those of you watching, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like and subscribe, join my server, whatever you may do to support my channel. If not, that's fine too. I'm not judging you. But one thing I gotta say, don't forget to go to the comment section and tell me whether or not you like this sort of video with alt history. I absolutely want to do something like this in the future, and I'd love to see what you guys think. Either way, thank you very much for joining, and I hope to see you all in the next one. There may be some delay and I may not put out another Flyout Weekly video for a little bit because I have some other projects going on, so sorry about that everyone. 
Either way, whether it's a couple days or a week or whatever it may be, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you for joining me, and goodbye.